G'day everyone, welcome back to another episode of Explore Rigs. It's pretty exciting this one. We've got one of the, the baddest 6x6 200s in the country. A uh, bloke that needs no introduction, we got Brad from Max Tracks. How you going mate? Good mate, yourself? I'm going good, what a cracking day. Isn't it glorious? We should be out there. Yeah I know, magic little day up here at Double Island. So look, we're going to do a walk around video on this, but mate first, I wanted to get a little bit of backstory for anyone that may not know you. Um, how long you been full driving for? Lost count, mate. Forever. You're getting pretty old now. Yeah, thanks a lot. <laughs> Probably, oh God, 35 years? Yep. So um, I did some testing with Defence back in 2012, 2013 when they were bringing the G-Wagons in. Yep. And they invited me out to sort of uh, give them a bit of advice about using Max Tracks out in the desert. Yep. So they had a couple of six-wheel drive G-Wagons and I just saw how, and I had a couple of rides with them and how easy they just went through that rough terrain. We were doing the Madigan and then cross country through the Simpson. Yep. And they just float, you know, and I went, that's cool. That's what I need, you know? Yeah. So that's the sort of stuff I love, that desert stuff and that long range touring, you know, up the coast, around the, around the bight, up to, yep. up to Fraser and that sort of stuff. So I went, yeah, I might try and. Because you've had bucket loads of different cars and obviously you've had a couple of 200s. Yeah. And then after that trip in the, the desert, is that when you decided, right, I'll have Yeah, have yeah a well, um, Mick McMillan, who's Australian Expedition Vehicles, he was sort of in charge of that testing program. Yep. And. At the time, I was driving my eight-year-old 100 series. Oh yeah, that's right, yeah. So there was a few issues with the G-Wagons on both of the trips. We did two trips and um, the height of summer, so November and February, we were, we were going across the Simpson, you know, 50 plus Celsius. And my eight-year-old Lanker is the only vehicle that didn't really have any mechanical problems. And yeah. at the end of it, Mick sort of said, you know, why are we buying these when here's an eight-year-old car that's done the same track, same trip, same conditions, with no issues and these have all got issues. You yeah. Know? So he's actually got out of defence and building Land Cruisers. Yep. Six wheel drive, you know, long range vehicles. Because you were early, but he, has he got a, did he have a couple of 200s out or was yours No, the mine first? was the first one. So okay. he, his plan was to build, based on a 79 platform, LRPVs, long range patrol vehicles for defence and for military and security and that sort of stuff. Yep. So I said to him, well, that's all well and good, but You'll, you'll go broke waiting for a military order. You know, yeah. you need to look at the recreational tourism market, you know, privateers. And I said, I wouldn't mind a 200 six wheel drive. Yeah. And at that stage, he was purely focused on the 79. So it's a little bit different for this. And I said, this can be the guinea pig, basically the prototype for that that market. Yep. So we sort of, we, we organized that and um, picked it up and then pretty much picked it up and did the Great Australian Bite the following week. Straight away. Yeah, so, and you know, as I said, like it's it's a bit heavier, it's a fair bit heavier. It's a bit thirstier than a standard 200. Yeah. But it's, you can take five people comfortably anywhere and you can tow a Razor, a boat, a jet ski, a quad, whatever you, whatever like. Whatever you like. You know, there's two people up the top, two people in there. Yep. Um, and generally what we do is we have the stretcher tents. So, a couple of people sleep in there, a couple sleep outside, all the gear goes in that sleeping compartment on yep. the road. There you go. And you set up camp like that. And I don't really like towing stuff, so I mean, fully self-sufficient wherever you go. Um, 100%. And it's, the, the tanks, we've got about a thousand K range. Okay. So, you know, Good the range. Madigan line or whatever it may be without having to, to worry about fuel. Well, we'll get into the back end a little bit later because I know you've changed that a couple of times. Yep. Um, so let's go through the basics. Before you chopped it, um, 200 series GXL. Yeah. What year model? 2000 and, I'll say 16. 16, yeah. so this is, this was, that was done straight away. So 2016 was the first ever 200 series chop. Yeah, six, six by six. Six by six by AV, yeah. Unreal. Yeah. All so. right, well, we'll get into it. We'll start walking around. Um, we'll start at the front. We'll do all the outside as usual, the motor, and then we'll work our way through the car. So uh, up front, bar work, what do you got? TJM. TGM bar work, scrubs, steps. Yep. You got the GME aerial, Terra Loom lights. What's uh what's the winch you're running on it's this a Warn. one? It's Warn. Warn. Xeon. Big big dog, what is it? 12? 12, yeah. 12,000? Yeah. You'd want you'd want as much winch power as you can get. Is it has it had a bit of a hiding or what? 
Um, well, we had it down in Tassie and we need to use it just to, more or less to turn it around on this skinny little track with yep. a broken prop shaft. Um, but other than that, you know, I mean, it's, it's pretty hard to get this thing stuck. And what's the GVM on it? Six. Six? Yeah. Six? Mm. And so what... I need a truck license. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. And what do you tow? Generally the, the Razor. So we've got an off-road trailer we tow that put the Razor on, or the Jeep. Yep. We're taking the Jeep take, somewhere. Take the wheelie. All right, let's work our way around the side. We'll talk wheels and tyres. You got the, uh, what are they, the ROH? Vapors. ROH Vapors. Yep. The Wrangler, they're, they're the MTRs. MTRs, mate, yeah. The Goodyears. Uh, 33s. 33s. Yeah. So they're a 285 70 17. Uh, we might as well go in. We'll do suspension at the front. What are you running suspension wise at the front? Icons. Icons, so. so billet control arms. Yep. And the stage five, the stage five system. So all remote reservoir shockies. Yep. And it's about a two inch ride height. Yeah, mate, it's about two-inch lift. Two-inch lift. It's yep. about as big as you can go on the 200s, really. Two-inch, yeah. 33s. Hmm. Any more than that, you end up scrubbing or you got no travel and you bloody end up breaking shit. Yeah. Um, all right, so mirrors. You've got the MSA towing mirrors on the side. Yeah. I've just chucked these on the new 70. Absolutely love them. And, uh, look, they're pretty neat on the um, 200 series as well. Rhino rack up on top. So what have you got? You got three Rhino platform racks <laughs> with the back bar system, and then just a sneaky uh, eight max tracks up on top, eh? <laughs> just in case someone needs rescuing. Yeah, well, that's this thing's not getting stuck too often, is it? No. Um, and then, all right, so we'll talk about the chop. That was all done up at Mix as well. Uh, that was actually done at Creative. Oh yeah. Initially, because Mick wasn't sort of set up to do that. Chopping. So that was that was done at Creative Conversion. So Creative Conversion did the chop. Yep. Nice little toolbox, little side box. Oh, you got. All right, so what's the go here? Revolution battery? Yeah, we've got uh, two rev batteries in one and either side, which okay. powers the, the canopy. Yep. So you can see there's a plug there that we can run the fridge, run the lights, run we've got an inverter in the back of there. All right, well, let's talk 12 volts since we just brought that up. So what's all that run by? Is you got a red arc gear yeah, up Yeah, there's a red arc controller. Oh, everything's in behind the back seat, so all yep. the electronics are in behind that back seat. We'll come back to the 12 volt when we go in the interior. We'll show you all of that. Now we're getting to where the magic happens, mate. This is where the exciting end of town is. Everyone's seen 200s up the front. Run us through exactly what they've done from the, from the uh, cab back, mate. So well, basically that whole system comes as a complete unit. Yeah. So it's using the J-Max axles and they cut the chassis, lift the body, weld it on and basically align it and there it is. Yeah. So six wheel drive on demand on demand. Push so, the four-wheel drive button and you've got six-wheel drive. Yeah, right. I need to put a sticker on that so it says six instead six, of four. Six <laughs> instead of four. Uh, what about lockers? Is it... There's a locker in that axle, like a Detroit locker in the middle of that axle. Yep. And that's all you need. That's all you need. Yeah. So you've got, is it full six by six all yeah. the time? When you press when that you button, engage. Yeah, when you engage that centre diff lock. There you go. So true six-wheel six. And when you're driving around just in the streets, yeah. how does that work? You have one... It's just the front. Just the front yeah. axle, and then you got a lazy axle in the rear. Just rolling behind. That's um, the way I understand it anyway. <laughs> yeah, that's the way you understand it. I just um, drive it. I don't really worry about the technical crap. <laughs> and then suspension-wise, uh, it's all icon. icon. Yeah. So it's coils, coils yeah. all round with the icon suspension. So it's basically two J-Max axles. Two J-Max. coils. Okay, so they're full J-Max yeah. rear diff housings yeah, as yeah. well? Yeah, so you got that. you got that travel. You yeah. know, the travel in this, it's... Have you we, got if we drive over something later, you can see how much the articulation is. Are you good. running um, airbags? Yeah. On, on both? Just on the back. Just on the rear, yeah. just, just to jack that up. Yeah. But Very... it's, I mean, the canopy steel, so the Outback Customs canopy, that's all steel. So yep. there's a bit of weight in that, and then that, that's pretty heavy. Um, but generally, that's got camping gear in it or nothing, and that's got a fridge and some food. And yeah, then on you, the other side. You do run extremely light considering everything you got. We'll get into the canopy shortly. Uh, we will keep working our way around, but Outback Customs uh, canopy, tray and canopy setup, which you know most of you guys will be familiar with. We'll walk our way around the back. So you're running the dual spares, reversing camera. Uh, one thing, same as my 79, that I love about the J-Max uh, rear ends is you get the, um, the rear winch cradle. Mm. So that's just another worn 12,000 yeah, yeah. in the rear. Nice and neat. I like that back end. There's not stuff hanging everywhere. Mate, it's a super tidy back end by the boys at Outback. So we'll work our way back around the side now. Even the way they've done the back on this is nice with the departure angle. Yeah, and this is the first tray that he did for a six-wheel drive. Okay. So there was a little bit of sort of to-ing and froing about how we 
did that middle section rather than just having a big open section that gives a little bit more shape. No, it looks good. He's done a good job. Yeah. And it's full um, full jack off as well, is it? Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, so each, each of these is separate. Yep. So you could take that one off, or you could take that one off, or take them both off. That's actually pretty cool. You can leave this canopy and then just yeah, fit so a the quad bike. Yeah, so the roof racks separate as well. Yeah. Oh, oh that's why you break the, the roof racks up. How long did it take you to build this thing from woe to go? Because obviously being the first, it would have been a lot oh, of R&D and mucking around. It was backwards and forwards, and I couldn't tell you, to be honest. It was, yep. I think it took a month for the canopy, trying the canopy. Um, yep. It's probably a couple of weeks for the cut, and then another couple of weeks for the, the chassis and the drive extension. Yeah. So, but it was... You know, it was, it was just sitting there and things were getting done with it. It wasn't like I was my daily drive and I'm going, oh, when, when's it going to be ready? I wasn't in a great rush for it. Yeah. So, and because it was the first one, it was a bit of... A bit of, bit of playing around. A bit of playing around to get it right. Okay, now we touched on fuel a little bit earlier that you get about 1,000 k's. Um, what, how many fuel tanks? <laughs> well, it's got the original tank in the front and then it's got a 200 litre Brown Davis in the back end. Big Brown Davis. What's yeah. the original on the 200s? How many litres um, is that? I think it's 100. 10, something like that. 10, so you've got about 300, just over something 300 like, yeah, litres of, yeah. of diesel. All right, well, there's not too much to see. We'll get round and run through the performance at the front. Um, obviously, Max Tracks mounts up the front, but let's let's get into the canopy. Let's get into the uh, exciting exciting stuff. Now, this is something in here that you uh, probably wouldn't expect, to be honest. What's going on here? <laughs> uh, that's, the, that's the single bunk. Yeah. Well, or two close friends. You know? <laughs> so, I mean, a lot of the time, if it's just me and I'm going somewhere, I can just pull up, pull Straight off the side in. of the road, crawl into bed, have a kip for, have a power nap, you know? Yeah. And jump back on the road. Um, so, generally, if there's four, four people coming with us, or there's four people in the trip, yep. all the camping gear will go in there, and then bags, clothes bags, and all that's in there. Yeah. When we set up camp, it all comes out, and someone can sleep in there, a couple yep. sleep on top. So essentially, um, as now, like, or if I'm doing a delivery, I can fill that up with max tracks and load it up. It is it a in. handy space. Like most people, when they build a canopy, they fill every single nook yeah. and cranny, and then they can't take anything. Yeah, I like the flexibility. Like mine, I've got a storage system on this side for camera gear and drones and all that sort of stuff. Yep. The other side's got the kitchen and food storage. Yep. But this is just whatever you want to take, just really. Whatever you want, nice yeah. and versatile. Yeah. So and I can sleep in it without having my head hit the the wall. And you're pretty tall, six. Yeah, I'm six one. Six so one. It's um. It's long enough, and some people don't like it because they reckon it's a bit like a coffin. But if you got the <laughs> you got the doors open, and generally if I'm if I'm camping somewhere and the weather's good, I just have the doors open. Yep. Um, but yeah, I don't I don't find it claustrophobic. And so. then what do you just quite? Can you close them up a little bit? Yeah, I just stick a thong in there, and one thong of these in, thongs in yeah. there, and uh, thong in there that gives keep you it open. Yeah, bit of just ventilation, a little, bit, little breeze, and if if it's raining. Unreal. So you just got a, a little mattress in here, and um, you do have a little bit of 12 volt going on in here. What do you got? The Victron. It's just a fuse box for basically for the canopy. Okay. And yeah. A, solar a, controller. And a bit of an out outlet. We didn't yeah. talk about solar. Is that on top of the, the Bush Company? Yeah. How yeah, many? It's got a big panel on top of there. How big is that panel? Big. You don't know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't worry about the technical shit. <laughs> so I just drive it. Yeah, that's it. All right, unreal. So there's sleeping accommodation one slash just loads of camping gear. He's got the uh, the flash new Max Tracks recovery gear in there as well, of course. Let's get into the back of the canopy. Well, it's just a step for getting in there. Yep, that's the, the first first bed step. The ladder for the roof topper. Second bed step. And the awning. Awning poles. Poles. This is cool. I haven't actually seen in this so, side before. Nor have I for a while. <laughs> it's first aid kit, remote area first aid kit, tool kit, spares, tyre repair, all that sort of gear. Yep. ARB compressor and just general bits and pieces. General bits and pieces. Um, so it stops it all rattling around. Any of that loose stuff, it all just gets chucked in there. Yep. That's the go. So this is where all your sort of story bits and pieces. What do you High got? High warmer. Yeah, you got to have the travel buddy. Yep. And uh, just some Makita tools, just angle grinders and battery drills and, and that sort of stuff. So I've got to ask you about the travel buddy. I'm building the new 70 at the moment. Do you use it? Yeah. 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 All Love right. it. Pull one in there. Mini pizzas. Yeah. Party pies. Away you go. So good. Chuck them in in the morning, oh, I guess halfway through the day, and then snack yeah. on them at lunch. Oh, oh what, what have we got in here? So that tunnel goes right through. So we've just got shackles, um, bits and pieces. There's a high lift jack and a big crowbar in there. Oh, that's bloody handy. Yeah, so it goes right across the back. That's so a good spot for a high lift jack too. There's yeah. nowhere to ever put a no, high lift jack. No, and it's secure, you know. Yeah. So it's just any sort of long, painful stuff. I think there's an axe in there and probably... Um, uh, breaker bar as well. Yeah, if it was anything like my truck, there'd be 
tools buried that you didn't even know you've had. Yeah. <laughs> All right, let's go have a bit of a quick look at the uh, kitchen. Before we get into this, I can tell that the truck, it's obviously, it's not for show. This thing's been <laughs> well and properly used. It has, mate, yeah. we've um, So it's been up the Cape. Yep. It's been across the Simpson, out to the Kimberley, East Kimberley. Yep. And then across the bite a couple of times. So, um, and then up to Fraser a few times and along here. We might bit. have to have a look when it gets in. We'll see how many Ks are on it. Yeah. Unless you know. I can't remember. From, we'll have a look. Honest. All right, so this is the uh, the kitchen cooking side of things. So run us run us through it, mate. As I said, mate, I like to sort of be keep it fairly flexible. Yep. So obviously you've got the MSA drop slide with the fridge on top. Yep. A um, couple of tables, a couple of chairs, and then food boxes, cutlery boxes, cookware and all that sort of stuff. Simple. So, just simple. And, and, you know, if we're just going up for the day, we don't need all that stuff. You can put boogie boards or dive gear or whatever in the back of there as well. Yeah. So I, I just like a flexible space. A lot of people have everything built in, as you said, yep. right to the nth degree. Yeah. But I like the flexibility of being able to just go, okay, well, we don't need all that. I'm just throw um, something else in. I'm in the final stages at the moment of designing the canopy for the back of my truck, and I was trying to decide on the other side whether to fill it out with drawers, but I think I'm just going to leave it yeah. a big open space. Yeah, because it's... I mean, every trip's different, yeah. depending on who's coming, you know, how far you're going, how long the trip is, what you need to take. Yeah. You know, so I just, I just like the flexibility of going, okay, that has to be there. Yeah. Need the fridge. But everything else, you know, and there's a bit of storage up on there for bits and pieces. Yeah. Barbecue. Um, how big is the fridge? Uh, I think that's the 60. 60 litre. Yeah, yeah. 60 litre ARV. Yeah. With the MSA drop slide. Um, you know, cutlery, all that sort of stuff stays in here. Yep. And then it's just depending if we've got six people coming, four people, two people, or just me, what, what goes in there. Yep. Um, I just like to have that flexibility for... And you're a bit like me, like obviously you do a fair bit of filming and bits and pieces for yeah. product testing and, yeah. and filming for other magazines and whatnot. So every trip is different. You've got to take a lot of shit that most normal people don't take when they go away. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, we take, we take a couple of drones just in case I lose one, which yep. is a pretty good chance. <laughs> and, um, you know, GoPros and all that sort of stuff. And then, I mean, the beauty of it is we set up a charge station in the back with a power board. Yep. And we've got a massive inverter there that we just charge everything. Charge everything. You know, so a lot of that sits on the back seat if there's just a couple of us. Yep. Um, but, yeah, I, I just like the, the flexibility. Yeah, unreal. You just never know. All right, we'll go around, pop the bonnet, and then we'll have a look inside the car. So obviously um, the big 200s come out with a pretty good, pretty good amount of power anyway from yeah. standard. Yeah. So they're a V8 um, turbo diesel. What have, uh, what have we got? What do you want to point out? You've, you've, you've still got a single ARB air compressor under here. Yeah. Uh, twin batteries Dual up batteries. the front. Yep. Steinbauer. Yeah. Power Steinbauer module. chip. Yep. And uh, an engine. And an engine. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so you got the Safari R-Max on the side, yep. power-wise you've just got that and the Steinbauer. Yeah, that's about it. So that's probably about... That's all it needs, really. 20% more than standard, yeah, roughly, yeah. is what it gives you. Yep. And that's enough for this thing to haul ice. Oh, yeah, yeah. Plenty. More than enough. I think yep. if you do too much, you just... I like reliability. Yeah. I think you start doing too much to them, and your reliability goes like that. It goes through. You're out in the middle of the desert. Yeah. Or on a remote bit of coastline down in South Australia. Yep. You don't want to be going, <laughs> yeah. what do I do now, you know? Because uh, so it's, you've had this for about four four years now. Any yeah. major fails engine-wise or...? No, no, it's... Um, it's been pretty good. It's been pretty good, mate. We broke a prop shaft and broke a shocky. Um, broke a shocky on the Gibb River Road. Yeah, well, um, that's... Yeah, that, that yeah, doesn't happen. <laughs> pretty, pretty common. Yeah. Um, especially with the weight. Yeah. You know, I thought I might be able to limp back with five wheels. Yeah. Turns out you can't. can't. <laughs> so I'd do a patch up on job on that and um, and then break a prop shaft, just a, a uni joint on the yep. on a track down in Tassie, climbing yeah. up a, a goat track. So, so other what, than that, it's what does that good. mean? If you break a rear drive shaft, do you lose all four wheels? Well it was yeah, the rear you do. So it was front wheel drive. So yeah. basically drive it back to Launceston to get it repaired in front yeah, wheel right. drive. So that was a fun night. So we got six out of the by six to uh Two, two, two wheel wheel front wheel drive. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, but it did the cool. job, you know. It, it, we drove it back to Launceston without any dramas and front yep. wheel drive. Um, got it fixed and went back out and joined the trip. So. Went back, keep going. Yeah. Oh, good but stuff. we sort of got a fix for that now. Shane's old man sorted something out for that. So. Yep. All right. Repairable props. Oh, what about exhaust system? What are you running there? Um, it's just a two and a half inch, just goes out the back of the DPF and pretty much straight through that chassis. Yep. Yeah. Happy days. All right, well, we've jumped in the cockpit here. First thing I notice is it's um, probably just as comfy as my 70. <laughs> <laughs> you think? Oh, geez, this thing's comfy. It's uh, So you've actually upgraded the seats. You've gone there, the Recaro. Recaro's, mate, yeah. Recaro's. And on the long drives, 
Does this front section comes in and out? Yeah, that it? extends out. There's a little button underneath. Oh, and yeah, that's the one. Out. So you get done to a nice bit of support under your knees. Oh, I shouldn't have sat in here. I've been um and an ah and over putting Recaros <laughs> in mine, and I think I'm just going to have to, I think. Um, then what else have you got? You've got a bit of a battery management system up here, just the Victron volt, uh, volt gauge. Yep. The GME handpiece. Otherwise, mate, she's a pretty pretty standard. Pretty um, stock, mate, yeah. We swapped that out, that Alpine, out for the oh, yep. existing, you know, the Toyota unit. Put Toyota the Alpine unit. unit into it. But other than that, she's pretty much stock. Stereo system. Well, that's the yeah. best thing about the 200 series is you don't have to do no. anything. Unlike the 70, where I've just spent about a 1000 bucks trying to make it not look like a tractor. Mm. Well, I think, I mean, Toyota have been doing it for years. And, and as I said, I just, reliability is the key for me. Yep. So I don't want to tamper with it too much. I know it works as it is, and so just a few little enhancements that just make it a little bit better. You're telling me you don't have a subwoofer? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> All right, cool. Well, that's the cockpit. We'll have a quick look in the back seat and check out the uh, 12 volt, and um, she's just about a wrap. So pretty simple back here, just the normal things, your floor mats, seat covers, and then the 12 volts tucked in quite nicely behind the seat. Uh, so you got the Red Arc uh, BC-DC charger, that's your 240 volt charger, is it? Yeah, mate, yeah, we've got a plug here that you just plug in when she's parked for a while, just plug, it, plug her in and just keep up. everything running. Keep it charged, you've got yep. the nice big uh, inverter there, 1800 watt inverter, and then just a couple of um, handy USBs and, and uh, SIG sockets, eh? Yeah, there's a couple on that side. We just have a power board sitting on the back seat to charge everything generally. Oh, okay, so you just pull out pull out the old uh, power board, yep. sit that on the back seat, and just away you go. Happy days. All right, we'll jump out and I'll, I'll just make sure we haven't missed anything, but what an absolute animal. All right, mate, well, I think we've just about seen any, everything. If there's something I've missed and you want to know, uh, please, please put it down in the comments. I'll get on to Brad and I'll make sure I answer all your questions. Now, there's one thing I did want to ask. Um, if you were to do anything differently, is there anything that you would change or is there anything that you're still going to do to the vehicle? Or Probably not, mate. I think it's... She's pretty much done. Yeah, she's pretty set. I mean, it's had a few shakedowns. Yeah. You know? Um, yeah, I don't think I'll change anything at all, to no, be honest. She's good to go. Yeah. What about, one thing I noticed that you don't have is an awning. Yeah. You just don't, don't. We don't sit still you don't, long enough. You don't sit still <laughs> long enough. So I actually have been on a trip with Brad and he just goes. He's up at, he's up at first light and we don't stop until the light disappears. So probably no time for the awning. No, no. Oh, well, thanks very much, mate. Really no worries, do mate. Uh, appreciate you giving us a look around. All good. Make sure you jump over to uh, the Max Tracks. I'll put their YouTube and Instagram there. Go check them out. If you want more information, uh, you'll be able to find it over there. What an absolute beast. Uh, stay tuned. Next time on Explore Rigs, we've got one 6x6. I don't want to say this, but it might be even better than yours. <laughs> we'll see how we go. Stay tuned. If you did enjoy this video, make sure you like, subscribe. Till then, get out and enjoy the Explore life.